Number 1. They Serve God They Serve God Psalms 103.20 Revelations 22.9 The psalmists let us know that the angels serve the Lord. Psalms 103.20 Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, obeying the voice of his word. Through the course of history, people have repeatedly fallen into the trap of worshipping angels rather than God. When John makes the error of worshipping an angel, the angel lets him know the truth. Revelation 22, 8-9, Amplified Bible I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you, and your brothers the prophets, and with those who heed and remember the truths contained in the words of this book, Worship God. As before in Revelation 19.10, John was overwhelmed and bowed before an angel in worship. In the same way, the angel reminded John that only God is to be worshipped, and that they were both players on the same team along with all who keep the words of this book. No created being should ever be worshipped. This is in contrast with Jesus, who receives the worship of angels and of men. Hebrews 1.6 And when he again brings the firstborn highest ranking son into the world, he says, and all the angels of God are to worship him. It is striking that even someone who had received all these visions may go astray. Supernatural visions and revelations do not mean that someone is correct in their doctrine, teaching, or practice. We need to look again at Hebrews 1.14 and take special notice of the term ministering niv, or even better, divine service, NRSV. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? In both translations, the word refers to priestly service in God's temple. He knew his audience was familiar with the work of temple priests. By pushing to the end of the verse, we see that they are sent by God as part of our redemption. These worshipping spirits are sent by God to help in our redemption, so we can join them in worshipping the God of redemption. Number 2. They attend to God and they take their missions in heaven. Angel Gabriel, delivering good news to Zechariah in the New Testament, said he was in the very presence of God. Luke 1, 19, Amplified Bible. The angel replied and said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand and minister in the very presence of God, and I have been sent by him to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Zechariah doubts the efficacy of Angel Gabriel's news, and the angel stops his mouth by asserting his authority. Angels have sometimes refused to tell their names, as to Manoah and his wife. But his angel readily saith, I am Gabriel, which signifies the power of God, or the mighty one of God, intimating that the God who bade him say this would be able to make it good. He is Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God an immediate attendant upon the throne of God. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them. This reveals the scene in heaven, unseen to Job and the others on earth, but absolutely real nonetheless. The story of Job can really only be properly understood by taking into account what happened in heaven and by having more than an earthly perspective. We read, When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, the phrase sons of God is used in the Old Testament to describe angelic beings. Job 38, 7, Amplified Bible. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy. Genesis 6, 1-4 Now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable, and they took wives for themselves, 
whomever they chose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever, because he is indeed flesh, sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years. There were Nephilim, men of stature, notorious men, on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to their children, these were the mighty men who were of old men of renown, great reputation and fame. Number 3. Angels are accompanying us to heaven. Believers who die will be escorted safely into heaven by the angels, according to the Bible. Two very different men were described by Jesus in one of his parables. There was a rich man who lived only for himself and ignored both God and others. This wealthy man had access to everything good in life. Lazarus, on the other hand, was not only poor but also covered in sores. He yearned to eat the crumbs that had fallen from the rich man's table but all he got were dogs licking his wounds. The contrast between the two men could not be more pronounced. From a purely earthly standpoint, the rich man was the clear victor, but Jesus was about to give them a bird's eye view of the world. Despite the fact that the two men had almost nothing in common in life, they both experienced an event that all humans face, death. After death, however, each experienced a complete reversal of fortune. When the poor man died, the angels took him to Abraham's side or bosom, an idiom for heaven. But when the rich man died, he went to Hades to suffer torment. Many people believe there is no such thing as an afterlife. They argue that when people die, they simply cease to exist. God's angels are real even though we may not see them or even know they are there. If they protect us now, can they also be trusted to safeguard our journey to heaven? Of course. In addition to escorting believers to heaven, angels perform God's work. Scripture confirms this. The Lord is God of all comfort, and He employs His heavenly army of angels to bring warnings of danger, tidings of joy, and messages of peace. The Bible calls them ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews 1.14 Believing that God will send these angelic comforters to escort us out of this world and into the next should give great peace to our souls. The Bible says the Lord shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Psalms 121, 7 to 8, New King James Version. We must remember, however, that while God's angels provide comfort and protection, even at death, it is God who dispatches them, and we are not to worship them. The hosts of heaven stand at attention as we make our way from earth to glory, and Satan's attacks are no match for God's angels. So don't be afraid. God is for you. He has committed his angels to wage war in this conflict of the ages, and they will win the victory. The Apostle Paul has said in Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Victory over the flesh, the world, and the devil is ours now. The angels are here to help, and they are prepared for any emergency. Number 4. 